The one time I've ever been afraid doing this job, honestly, was in 2016 in Cleveland, when men, because it's an open carry state, Ohio, were pacing in front of our position with long guns, with AR-15s, in a way to menace us. As we were in our outdoor positions, they felt that they needed to send a message to us visually with their firearms. And I think about the people who have tried to vote in Arizona when men with long guns were standing outside of those polling places to send them a message. Mm -hmm. You don't vote the right way. I'm here with this gun. And so the idea of political violence that we've been nursing really since then is so dangerous. Yeah. It's so dangerous that you cannot avoid the consequences of it, even if you're one of the people promoting it. No, that's right. And, and the, the political system collapses under the threat Absolutely. Of because that is the end of politics and the beginning just of the use of force. I didn't know. I didn't know if we were going to be this real. But as long as we're going there, I, I'll say this: um, I've worked on a half a dozen campaigns, and I've never needed any sort of security from the other side. I mean, I worked on Republican campaigns, and I was never under any threat, verbal or physical, from any of the opposing campaigns. Since I've had this job covering the Trump movement, everyone that goes to rallies from every news organization has security. Mm -hmm. Most people who are in the public arena rely on security to protect their families. In a post-Paul Pelosi moment, you thought some circuit might trip yeah. and break. It didn't. They mocked him. They made fun of him and the circumstances around his attack. In a post-Gabby Giffords America, you thought we might have a real conversation. In a post-Steve about... Scalise? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and nothing I mean... has, has changed the conversation. Um, it is sick and sad that Trump was targeted. It is an epic tragedy that a route, my parents go to Trump rallies. It is an epic tragedy that someone who was there to support their candidate died protecting mm -hmm. their, their family. Um, there is not nothing that can be done. There's something that can be done. There can be loud, platformed condemnation of the violence, and it doesn't come from across the ideological spectrum. Yeah. And it's, I will say that in this moment, I also feel like when, when, in talking about it being like, is this going to be a different type of moment? Is there going to be a, is there going to be an outbreak of sobriety? I mean, part of that means being forgiving and soft-hearted toward people who have done the wrong thing in the past who now want to do the right thing, right? I mean, one of the things that has happened in the wake of some of these other violent incidents is that people who have said, you know, I've used rhetoric in the past that now when I reflect on it is not the kind of rhetoric that I'll use again. That's good. That sort of thing ought to be encouraged. We see, we're going to see a little bit of that mm -hmm. in the clip they've released already from, from President Biden speaking with Lester Holt, saying, talking about some language that he's used in terms of targeting Trump and whether or not that could have been misconstrued by somebody and the president engaging in some reflection about that. I mean, part of the idea here about this being a different type of moment is that we should experience some growth as a nation and that there should be self-reflection by everybody in the public arena. But that also doesn't mean we have to give up being clear eyed about the magnitude of the threats and where they're coming from. Exactly. I mean, and that we've all will talk about the clip of, of President Biden and him being asked about language he used yeah. using using targeted and using bullet uh, being uh, the using language that's around gun violence, which is certainly not what he meant, I think, in that moment. But it is important to think about your words. I also will say, though, I mean, Donald Trump just selected somebody for his vice presidential running mate who tweeted this. Today is not just some isolated incident, and this is after, of course, the tragedy that happened on Saturday. The central premise of the Biden campaign is that President Donald Trump is an authoritarian fascist who must be stopped at all costs. The rhetoric led directly to President Trump's attempted assassination. So yes, I think we do always need to give people a bridge to do the right thing, and maybe this is a moment for that. But that is the person who has just joined the ticket with Donald Trump. And yeah. I think it's important not to forget that. Either. And I think, you know, the choice of J.D. Vance had not been announced when J.D. Vance tweeted that out. And That's so true. there was still a possibility if we were going to have like a change of course here as a country. Once he said Democrats did this, Democrats, the word there, Joe led, Biden did led this. directly to is the mm -hmm. phrase that he used there. Right. Once he said that and blamed it in a partisan way like that, there was an option in the Republican Party and in the Trump campaign to then not pick J.D. Vance. Mm -hmm. But let's not, let's heed Joy's warning, let's not memory hole who Trump is. It's mm -hmm. probably why he picked him. Yeah. It probably helped him. Yeah. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Ari? I would just add that there's, why did this happen is a question that could be answered slowly through an investigation or 
for a lot of people, it doesn't matter. And we've referred to people who had a take in an hour or two that was political, which means they're actually outing themselves. And I would think that applies to some people on the right uh, who wanted to immediately politicize this. And it also has applied to some statements I've seen from people on the left who rushed to look at this as caused by something. But from an investigative perspective, we don't have motive yet. Law enforcement's been on it for several days. We know they got the phone and they don't feel in a position to tell us publicly that the phone has revealed motive. Uh, we have clues that are isolated. So he's a registered Republican, but he's made other types of political donations and we don't have the full context on that. So I do think it's important to remember that what you said is true. Historically, most lone wolf assassinations do not matter that much as to motive over time. Yeah. It would matter if hypothetically someone was working in concert with a large organization or a foreign entity or they were an espionage asset. Then the motive matters a lot because it's an act of war. Right. But with you know what you said, Rachel, lone wolf attacks historically that use political violence, which often relate to mental illness or other sort of kook attitudes may not ultimately matter. But that's one question is why did this happen? Can we figure that out? And then the other vantage point is, why does this happen so much in America? Mm -hmm. And there's a security failure question for the Sec Secret Service, which has not so far been very forthcoming. And this is a massive failure. Someone tried to shoot a former president in the head. He called Donald Trump a cynical a-hole, cultural heroine, and America's Hitler. Honor. Yeah, he also called him an idiot, Nicole, and I think that that vociferous opposition uh, to former President Trump is going to be something that J.D. Vance will have to answer for. And, of course, I'm sure he's prepared to answer those questions. He wasn't picked by former President Trump uh, because of an inability to answer those questions. They've certainly reconciled. Uh, they've come together on issues like manufacturing uh, and the decimation of the Rust Belt. But, like I said, their solutions, those solutions to those issues are ones uh, that the Democratic Party certainly uh, view as extremist MAGA policies, uh, and that's, I think, well, ultimately, we're now seeing the setup of what that debate is going to look like. And that's the nomination. Let's take a quick listen. Sure. No no's. The ayes have it. The motion's adopted. J.D. Vance is now the official nominee of the Republican Party to be the vice president and general candidate alongside Donald Trump. And now the debate over policy begins, Nicole, including some of those issues that you mentioned very clearly, his vociferous opposition to Donald Trump uh, when Donald Trump was a nascent candidate for president of the United States. Basil Michael, your thoughts as you watch this? Well, you know, the word that I think some people will say is that he has evolved in his <laughs> positions. I mean, he changed his mind. Plain and simple. And he changed his mind out of political expediency. This is a man who raised money for January 6th defendants. I mean, this this just be very clear that what Donald Trump, and, you know, there was a statement that, you know, this might have been a surprise, but, you know, if Donald Trump was looking for somebody that was A, conservative, B, representative of the state of Ohio, in thinking that maybe that would help him in some of those other uh, states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, and someone who was very, very, very quick to blame Joe Biden for the shooting right after the assassination attempt. And to me, that signaled this is a man that has Donald Trump's back no matter what. And if Donald Trump had seen that, you know, weeks ago or felt that weeks ago, there was no doubt in my mind that this was going to be the, the kind of person he would choose, but certainly the person he was going to choose now that we know. David Jolly, there's something so normal about the stagecraft of a convention, any party's convention, that's so jarring against the backdrop of the moment. It is. And look, for J.D. Vance, I think he's where Marco Rubio was 15 years ago, which is on the leading edge of the Republican political trend. It's just very different. Marco Rubio is on the leading edge of the Tea Party movement and let's eliminate cabinet departments and lower taxes, less regulation, all that stuff with kind of the hard right edge. J.D. Vance is on the leading edge of where Donald Trump has delivered this party eight years after coming down the elevator. And I think what is most shocking about this convention to me, there's kind of the suspension of reality that we are now here eight years later, that of all the conventions you and I have probably been to, there used to be platforms with policies that at least made sense in the conservative world. What is remarkable about this convention is what it's devoid of because it's been replaced with this cult of personality that allows a J.D. Vance to move in through nothing more than through loyalty, blind loyalty, if you will, um, to Donald Trump and Trumpism. And I think that will be the theme of this entire convention. It's a, it's a weird moment mm -hmm. in Republican mm -hmm. history. Claire? 
Yeah, I, I, there's been a lot of talk about whether conventions should even continue. Um, <laughs> you know, they're expensive. Well, we um, didn't have them four years ago. Yes, we did not have them four years ago. And, you know, I've been to my share. Mm -hmm. And I maybe would put myself in that camp of why do we have them. Um, now, we, and this was, you know, by acclamation, there was no discussion. Um, the platform does not reflect this candidate's view on abortion because... So you can see that, that Trump has bungled this issue. One, there's some polling from today that says that even... And this is done, this is a new poll, but you know sometimes polls are delayed. This is a new poll conducted entirely post the tragedy that we saw over the weekend, right? There's no change. Biden is still down in that poll, but he's down by the exact same amount he was the last time they did it before all of that went down, the, the, the shooting and all of that over the weekend. And Donald Trump is still getting some sympathy and there's been, you know, like Biden's temporarily taken down some of the attack ads. I don't agree with that. I think Trump should be attacked harder. Uh, why should we, why should we uh, go softer on him when it was a Republican Party member who did this? Trump should be forced to denounce his own supporters. It was a MAGA man. There were Trump signs outside of his house, according to some reports. Trump should be forced to answer for it. I don't care. But the thing is, is that if he was going to get sympathy, it's based on not making it all about attacking Biden and, and this. And we saw them chanting, fight, 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 fight. And specifically, Vance was one of the people, seconds after this happened, trying to politicize it trying to blame Democrats when we knew it was a registered Republican all along. If he was going to make a VP choice that was going to help him bring the sympathy of the shooting into the long-term narrative of the campaign, he picked the very worst person to do it. And that screwed himself hardcore.